hi guys and welcome back to my channel um <coughs> i tried to record this video five times yesterday and i just kept feeling like it was all over the place and my words weren't coming out right and i'm like so scared of offending other women who have went through this um and i'll get into that in a minute but I've had a lot of people reach out to me and ask for an update. And so I want this, I want to update you guys on this whole journey. Um, I cannot believe how many people are interested in my story. And starting off this video, I just want to say thank you so much to the women who have rallied around me and prayed for me and reached out to me and told me their stories. And I just, God, I was not expecting this kind of reaction at all i just wanted to get a little awareness brought to this condition and i just i just wasn't expecting what i got um and i just from the bottom of my heart like thank you so much i'm trying to keep up on the comments they keep pouring in at like a, a pretty good rate in messages and stuff and so i'm trying um you guys will just never know how much your kind words have, have meant to me um, and helped me over this whole thing and just feeling a little less isolated. Um, so thank you from the bottom of my heart to everybody that has done that for me. Um, so I, I, I am going to do an update. I, I just didn't want this video to be super emotional, so I've waited about a week to update. Um, I've waited a little bit, actually. So I just waited a little bit to update because I didn't want to be so, I don't want this constantly to just be videos of me crying and I, I wanted to wrap my head around things better and kind of come to terms with it on my own and be able to talk about it not so emotionally. Um, and I think I'm, I'm getting there. I think I'm getting there and I did my makeup today. So I, I thought in my head, well, if you do your makeup, then you can't cry. <laughs> so, um, Anyways, I am going to update you guys right now. So if you are interested um, in just kind of following along on my molar pregnancy journey and my updates and stuff, then just keep watching. Okay, so after the last video that I I put up um, talking about my diagnosis and how I felt about everything and all the information that I got right off the bat, I went to the doctor um, and my mom went with me who is an RN my husband went with me and then me um my sisters were watching sawyer and so we were all pretty emotional about it we, we were all really raw in our feelings um just kind of letting you guys know the headspace of everybody my mom's an rn i just lost my dad to cancer not even two years ago um, so she is very wanting to be proactive. She wants to be on top of it. She doesn't want to wait around for things to happen. My husband is is worried. He's pretty scared. He has already mentioned he doesn't want to get pregnant again. He doesn't want to try this again. We're not going through this again. I'm dealing with the loss of the child I thought I was going to get. All these terms, cancer thrown at me, weekly testings, monitoring, everything all these scans and blood draws and just you know I'm, I'm pretty emotional um, and then my husband is telling me he, he, after we have both wanted a baby so bad is now telling me he we're not doing it again like we're not taking this risk so I'm just very emotional so we go to the doctors and she goes on to tell me that we're just gonna have to watch my um, HCG levels weekly. I'm going to have to do all the draws and if everything goes good, then I'll be monitored for a year and then at a year I could try again. And she told me if we do try again, <coughs> I'm getting over a cold, sorry. She told me if we do try again that we are at higher risk to have another molar pregnancy. And then, um, which really sucks um which totally freaked my husband out and that made him say no like we're not going through this again because what what says it's not going to be cancer that time after going through it a year on that time if it happens again then she told me that if it doesn't go um 
if it goes the opposite way and my levels rise at any point or a plateau, then we'll do the whole chemo route thing. And then my mom asked some questions, my husband asked some questions, and then I was asking her if at any point, and then I was asking her, okay, so if I don't get pregnant again in my life, is this something that I have to worry about it? Does this mean I'm at higher risk for cancer? And this is where I'm very confused. Um, and this is... So she told me, yeah, it's something I'm going to have to worry about for the rest of my life. She said at any point this could basically flare up without getting pregnant. I could be 45 one, one day, wake up and feel pregnant, go to the doctors, and they can come to conclusion basically that it has become invasive and spread and turned cancerous. So I didn't know that. That was nothing that I have read online. Obviously Google isn't the tell all, but it's nothing that I've read. And I've, ever since being diagnosed, anyone that can relate to this um, whole condition, I mean, you just fall down a rabbit hole of reading everything and anything you can get your hands on because there's not a lot of it. So that's just nothing that I've seen before. And then I found this amazing group on Facebook. Um, it's a support system, a support page for women who have been through molar pregnancies and partial molar pregnancies, and no one has mentioned this. And so I'm just confused because there's, I've just never heard this before. So if you guys have been through this, only if you guys have been through this, do you, is that something your doctor told you? Is that something you've heard of before? Um, please reach out to me and let me know. But continuing, she told me, you know, you're going to have to worry about it for the rest of your life. It could turn to cancer at any point, even if you don't get pregnant. So then I start crying because it's just a lot. My husband is a nervous wreck. My mom's worried, which scares me because she's, anybody have an RN for a mom, they don't get worried. <laughs> um, and then so my husband, you know, is asking, okay, well, how do we stop this? How do we get on top of this? What do we do to prevent this? And my doctor said the only way you can sure fire prevent it, like the only way you can really prevent it is to have a hysterectomy. So I just feel like thing after thing just keeps getting piled on my shoulders and it's like, you know, it's just a lot. That's like all I can say. It's a lot. It's a lot of emotions. It's a lot of grieving for me, I feel like. Um, and so my husband's like, yeah, we want to do that. Like, let's do it. And then I start crying even more. And I'm just like, I, I'm not ready for that, you know? And I know where he's coming from. I know 100% I get where he's coming from. But I guess, you know, for me, it's just I'm 28. Never did I think any of this would happen to me. And, and then you get all these just like, I don't know, a hysterectomy, like that's huge. I feel like being a mother completely defines me and that's just taking that all away. Like you're just taking my choice away. You're taking away, you know, I don't know. So that was just even more emotional. And I told my doctor, like, I don't, you know, I, I don't, obviously I don't want to do that and, and. I'm not there yet, and um, yeah, so that's what I was telling her. And then, um, ugh, sorry, I'm like having a, I don't know, brain fart or something. So anyways, I told her I'm not there. That's not what I want to do yet. You know, and, I, and we want a bigger family. That's what sucks, and... And another like huge thing that I that I think about a lot and that on that group that I found who are women who have went through this personally I'm super confused as to why and this is where like I'm so scared to offend women who have been through this because I'm, I'm not I'm just I don't know the answer and I just don't like I feel like do I not have the right information do I not did my doctor not relay it right like I feel like all these women, women who have been through this are counting down the days to get pregnant again and they're they're so eager to try again and and I know that s women that have been through this go on to have healthy pregnancies so it's not impossible but 
also like I feel like I'm terrified to set myself up to possibly go through this again and then put it a year out and then I'm older and then that you know and then you get a molar pregnancy that time and then maybe it turns to cancer that time like is it worth it like obviously a baby is worth it and I and and I like that's what breaks my heart the most is that I want another baby so bad and I know Ryan does too um, but I'm just not understanding why everybody who has been through this is so I don't know because my husband's completely against it like he's I'm he's like we're not trying again naturally so one of the last things my doctor told me was that IVF was an option um, that it's a lot to go through you have to go through hormone treatments and egg retrieval and implantation and fertilization of the egg out there um, it, it's a lot she said but it basically eliminates a molar pregnancy from happening because a molar pregnancy happens at egg and sperm fertilization so you know then then our plan was okay we'll do IVF after IVF we'll have the hysterectomy so it's not something that I have to worry about um, and that's kind of how the appointment went just taking it week by week now and um, praying and just trying to have faith and rely on God as much as I can even though that's it's hard <laughs> um, but that was kind of what I left that was my headspace. Like I left thinking, okay, well, we kind of have a safer plan. IVF, hysterectomy, may, that's probably the route we're going to take. And then, I, and then I go home and I can't stop reading about stuff. I can't stop reading these women's stories on this page. And a woman had mentioned that IVF doesn't eliminate a molar pregnancy from happening. So I just, I'm confused. I feel like I have a huge lack of information. I feel like every story I read, their doctor does things different and tells them to do different things and takes precautionary scans, which my doctor was so, like, not wanting to give me. My mom was very wanting to be proactive on the situation. So when we were in the doctor's office, my mom was very, she wanted to be very proactive. She wanted to get the lung scan, the brain scan, the, the uterus scan to make sure nothing had already spread because um, when something's left behind from the DNC, that's when I guess it spreads or things take a turn for the worse. And she was kind of against it, kind of didn't really want to do it, said it wasn't protocol. And, um, but then I'm seeing these other girls who they're, that's what their doctors do. Their doctors do a second DNC. They get scans right off the bat to make sure nothing was missed or, and I just, I didn't get any of that. So it's like, um, until my mom pushed so hard for it. And then I got the lung scan and a pelvic scan, which came back clear. Um, so, so that came back clear. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I feel like there just needs to be more information on this there needs to be more awareness to this i don't know i feel like this is the hundredth time i filmed this video and it still sounds all over the place i still sound like i'm not relaying what i want to relay right um, but a lot of you guys have asked about my levels so i just wanted to give an update on my bhcg levels after my dnc so um a week after my dnc it was 4400 and then two weeks after it went down to 497 and week three which was last week was 106 and then i go tomorrow for another one um yeah so my levels are trending down good it's just anyone who's been through this knows it's so hard to get excited about your levels going down when you're it's just like this whole thing is a shit show like to be honest like this whole thing is just crap like it's a crap like it's just i got dealt crappy cards with this um it's hard to get excited about like levels lowering when it's almost just like at this point i'm just waiting for them to stop or plateau or the next term to be thrown at me um but i'm trying that and then i know that's where faith comes in and i know 
um, it's just something I have to work on. I not to lean, just be more positive, and it's just easier said than done for me. And a, a lot of you know, some of my friends have said like, "Oh, well, just don't think about it. Please don't say that, guys." Like, <laughs> my whole life just got turned upside down. Like, I am gonna think about it. Like, I'm not gonna not think about it. Like, <laughs> but I know people are just trying to help. <sighs> so, anyways, guys, that's where I'm at. Um, I, I definitely want to keep updating. I just don't want them to be sad, depressing videos every single time. If you have any answers to the questions that I've kind of put out there, please let me know. What did your doctor say about trying again? And so many people have told me like, oh, it's so rare. But on this Facebook page, s women have definitely had multiple molar pregnancies. So I don't think it's as rare as we're, we're being told it is. I don't know. Anyways, help me. <laughs> Reach out to me if you guys have these answers about IVF answers or anything, honestly. Um, and thank you guys so much again. I will definitely try to update, maybe update more in my vlogs because, like I said, I feel like these videos are just depressing and weird. So, um, so that's it for now, you guys. Um, thank you so, 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 so much again for the hundredth time to everyone who have reached out to me. I'm trying to get back to everybody. Um, but thank you guys so much. And, um, yeah, if you guys want to see what me and Soy have going on in the next video, then please subscribe and we will see you guys later. Bye.